On the menu today, it's Julia Child's lasagna. Wait, what? Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. So that's right. We got Julia's rendition of lasagna à la française in the French manner. She's got to say à la française there so that she can try to get away with this one. Uh, but you're going to find this recipe in From Julia Child's Kitchen, the cookbook. Oh, hello, everyone. Welcome to my home. What is yours for the next little bit? Could she have not predicted the wrath of YouTube comments that comes with venturing into Italian cuisine? Uh, Julia. Uh, but yeah, she did get a lot of hate for this recipe back in the day. She got scorned. What do you mean using our national dish lasagna for leftovers? The very idea made me ill, said one angry person. That's right, the recipe is <laughs> a vehicle for leftovers. She's very clear about that. And she was called an insult, a hedonist, and an ignoramus for that reason. I've also been called those things, so we're twins. We're twins. Now, a recipe, of course, has, you know, pasta and red tomato sauce and white sauce and there's cheese. Of course, there's also like a mystery meat, kind of like, it's like you choose what kind of meat you want to add in there with green vegetables. Also, you choose. And she even mutters the word cottage cheese. I don't know, but cottage cheese. I don't know. Anyway, this is kind of giving me the same vibes that her moussaka recipe did, which is like you have to throw those preconceived notions of what a lasagna is out the window. And you kind of just have to go with it. So be warned, let's get to work. Now this lasagna recipe exists because Julia is imagining, you know, companies coming over, you need to whip something up quick. How about a quick lasagna? So she's using curly lasagna store-bought pasta. If I wasn't filming, maybe I would go that route, but I like to make things difficult and I like to give myself more work to do. So I'm gonna make my own pasta. I was doing so last year out of this cookbook, Marcella Hazan, for another legend in the essentials of classic Italian cooking. I have experience with the pasta recipes out of this cookbook. So I figure make your own pasta today, Jamie, don't be lazy. On the surface here I got the double zero flour. This is a cup and three quarters or 200 grams. I'm using three eggs though. And the internet says that for every egg you use 100 grams of flour. Well, I'm using 200 grams because I'm following along to Marcella's recipe. So I have an extra 100 grams on standby if I need it. And I'm gonna add my three eggs into a little well here. Stir in the eggs with a fork as if you're making an omelet and keep the flour wall strong. Move the walls of the flour in with the eggs. <gasps> we got a leak. If it starts leaking like that, then just keep going. Don't worry about the mess. Okay, so now just kind of move the flour into the eggs. So I just need that combined. Knead this all together. Curl my fingers there and with the heel of my palm, I'm gonna push the dough forward, fold the dough in half, and then give it a half turn and then keep doing that. She says for around eight minutes. Since the dough is a bit wet, I'm gonna just toss in a little extra flour. Press my thumb into the dough and if it comes out clean, done. Into a smooth kind of ball shape there. I'm gonna chill that for like half an hour because I got all this other stuff I gotta do too, so. Julia was putting this thing together with food that was already made. Like I said, it's a leftover dish for her. For me, uh, I gotta make everything from scratch. I don't have any leftovers in the fridge besides like a pancake stack cake. That's not gonna be much use for us right now. Two to three cups cooked diced chicken, turkey, veal, or pork. Whatever you got in the fridge on hand, that's what you use. That's all it says. So you're kind of just like, okay. Now in her TV show, Julia mentions that she's using chicken that was simmered in white wine. And I've made that recipe before. It's out of the uh, Way to Cook cookbook. I'm gonna just quarter this chicken up. And then we're gonna half each quarter. Done and done. Season our chicken, so the salt and 
pepper. Then I put my thang down, flip it and reverse it. And we're gonna season some more. I hope everyone's okay. Uh, so I gotta start off with the Dutch oven. I got a couple carrots, the tender part of one giant ass leek, and four stalks of celery, all just very roughly julienned. And I'm gonna add a third of these vegetables in now. Add in some salt, pepper, no butter, quarter teaspoon of dried tarragon, and everyone's favorite, bay leaves. Well, bay leaf, I only need to use one. There it is. I just can't help myself. That's two. We'll be walking tonight. So let's get the chicken pieces in on top of our bed of vegetables. Now we cover the chicken with the rest of the vegetables. Around two cups of chicken broth. The rest is gonna be a dry white wine. This is a Sauvignon Blanc. And it's to just barely cover the chicken. It's enough for a glass. And while you're drinking that, if you just bring that up to a simmer, mm, that'd be great. Cover it, turn it down, but keep it simmering until the chicken's cooked through. So 20, 30 minutes and keep an eye on it. So it's done when it's tender. Ooh, yeah. And when you poke it with a fork, the juice runs clear. Turn the heat off. Perfect timing. Turn the heat off and I'm gonna let this steep in the liquid for like 15 minutes or until I'm ready for it, honestly. Till I'm ready for it. All right, so we gotta move on to this excellent tomato sauce. Or as Julie always says, tomato sauce. She likes saying tomato, I say tomato. Big onion, this is a big onion. Julia was using a big onion in her show, so I was like, okay, I need a big onion. Finely minced, or as finely minced as you wanna mince them. Bowl me. Thank you. So I'm gonna do something a bit different today. Julia says you need three large tomatoes. So I got uh, an extra small one there too. Usually I have a pan boiling with water on the stove and then I dunk these guys into that boiling water. But this time I'm like, well, why don't you just bring the water to the tomatoes? So this is boiling. And I'm gonna let those tomatoes soak in there for 10 seconds. The skin just easily peels right off. Perfect. I'm gonna split these tomatoes in half crosswise. Remove the seeds and the juice. Honestly, this step, I hate this step. Cut once, cut twice. Avoid the stem, because you forgot to stem it. I don't want the stem. Across and then cut across again. A full can of Italian plum tomatoes. I need to drain the canned tomatoes and sieve about one cup of the pulp into the... So I need to first drain, what am I doing? Drain the canned tomatoes. So I am very confused by the logic in removing all the seeds from the fresh tomatoes and then I add in the canned tomatoes and they all have seeds in them. And I remember in her show, she passes the canned tomatoes through a food mill. So I don't really understand what's going on, quite honestly. I don't know, she was never doing her own dishes, so she just was able to do all these things. I'm gonna need around a cup. Saucepan. That's one of my favorites right there. And let's get the heat on. Two tablespoons of olive oil, adding in a cup of the minced onion. That's about a cup. Okay, so we're looking for a tender but not brown look. It's gonna be six to eight minutes or so, and like a medium heat. So just keep stirring occasionally, keep it going. I have never come across such confusing directions on how to make a tomato sauce before. I make one every week and I just wing it. It comes out great every single time. But with Julia, <laughs> she tells me to remove around half of the onions. We save it for later. In goes the fresh tomato pulp. I'm gonna add the garlic in with this step now rather than the next step, as Julia says, because uh, I think they should be involved now in the process, you know? Cook away with what's going on now. Here, just pass them through the little contraption and there you go. And I turn the heat down to like a medium low and just have those cook away for a few minutes. Half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, a big pinch of saffron threads, 
some dried orange peel, homemade style. I was eating an orange earlier and then I kept this orange peel drying out in the sun and voila. And I need only a quarter teaspoon worth. Let's get those canned tomatoes along with pepper and salt. All right, slightly covered down to a low simmer uh, for 30 minutes at least. And if it thickens up, then I have some tomato juice that I can just add in there. Uh, so we're gonna circle back to the pasta. I summon the Chromio Alfredo, the pasta machine. It's good to see ya. Okay, so with the firmed up pizza dough, it's not pizza dough, with our firmed up pasta dough here, divide it up into, I'm thinking, six different pieces. Right, could I just have like, yeah, just a small bowl. Thank you. That way I can just cover those pieces. Fold once and twice into the center there, into that little shape there. Flour the pasta machine, of course. Pasta, pasta. Why do settings go lengthwise down? Then I do a widthwise. I always like to do the widthwise next. Adjusting the notches to be a bit thinner with each pass through until I got this to the desired length I'm looking for. to the thinnest setting, that's notch nine. So although I am following Marcella's recipe here, uh, I do want what Julia is asking for here. Two by 12 inches. Split that in half and in half. Off go the uneven tips and then that should be uh, it. Yeah. Cool. Bunch of different mushrooms here, whole ones sliced ones, and I'm just gonna dice them all up into around two cups worth. Have they been cleaned? Of course. All she says is dice these up, so just doing so in a way that's gonna be acceptable for a lasagna. So just do a courtesy dice. My frying pan, two tablespoons of butter, tablespoon of oil. When the butter foam begins to subside, in go the mushrooms, tossing and shaking for four to five minutes. The mushrooms are gonna absorb that fat initially. They're gonna look kind of dry. And then in a few minutes, it magically reappears on the surface. Off the heat. So gather around everyone. This is what's about to take place. Uh, I have my beautiful looking uh, lasagna noodles. They've been hanging out in the rack for the last half an hour or so in the tree fort, waiting for their moment. Uh, they look nice, they look nice. You know, they're not completely all uniform, but I'll make it all work in the end, so it's not a big deal. I gotta parboil these as per Marcella's recommendation, so that's gonna infuse a little salt into them. It's gonna get the cooking um, started. Okay, to my Richard, I have a pot of boiling water and I'm gonna add a bunch of salt, a tablespoon or two. Once that's up to a rolling boil, in goes the lasagna noodles for only 10 seconds. Just do a few at a time, man. All right, 10, 20 seconds. Really depends on where you were in the pot. If you're at the very bottom, it might be 30, 40 seconds. Into the cold water. Marcella says to hand wring them in the sink as if you're washing laundry. Gently place them on this towel. Whoa, that one kind of ripped. Oh no, have they all ripped? No, that one looks good. That one looks nice. Pat dry. Can I have a colander? Thank you. Now we're headed back to Julia territory and Julia wants me to hang them dry on the colander. Like that. And I have those hang out like that. And then there. So we're gonna move on to our spinach here. So I have like eight or 10 cups worth of raw spinach here. And I need only two cups of cooked spinach. It's always an amazing sight when you can see how much of this cooks down into something so tiny. My frying pan here, my pan. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of butter. A medium high-ish heat. Take the butter packaging off. A, B, melt the butter. In goes the spinach. Keep stirring that around for a few minutes. Lid on that so that I can cook down until the moisture has boiled off. Add in a little salt. Pepper, a pinch of nutmeg. All right, that's good, turn off the heat. Believe it or not, we did poach chicken in white wine. It feels like it was about, I don't know, a week ago. First, let's peel this chicken. 
falls right off the bone. It's beautiful. This is really nice. Dice the chicken up. I have followed this recipe before, but I've never had it taste that good. There's so much flavor in this chicken. Quick bowl. Thank you. Once that's diced, just, I don't know, over there is cool. In a different scenario here, if you weren't making lasagna, you could save the vegetables and serve them over steamed rice with the chicken and chicken juices. Or just like, you could turn this degreased She has returned. You done? Let's bring over the cooked spinach. Should have around two cups worth. I'd say pretty close. That knife has ch chicken all over it. Quickly chop up the spinach. Oh, that's only one cup of cooked spinach. All right, I'm just gonna whip up some more spinach, if you don't mind. Turns out that like eight to 10 cups of raw spinach equals one cup of cooked spinach. I'm not even mad, it's just amazing, isn't it? So let's just do the same thing. You don't need to see me do this, you get it. So here are the mushrooms that you're gonna spill everywhere. Also, I should mention that I did cook up some more mushrooms as well, because I didn't think I had enough. I didn't tell you, I didn't think I was going to, and then I was like, you know what, just be honest. I go all out with these recipes, so I make sure that I have everything that Julia wants me to have, including the cheese choices. She said you could choose between one or all of them. I was like, oh, what the hell, let's do all three. This is Gouda, provolone, and of course, Parmesan. So I only need a cup worth. <laughs> I only need a cup worth, silly boy. I think I'm gonna do a little extra parm. Did I deliver? The big three, provolone, Gouda, Parmesan. You got more ingredients. Every time I go over the fridge, I bring out something new. This time we got some ricotta, or as the Italians say, ricotta. <laughs> I don't know. We got some ricotta. We got ricotta. So I remember way back when at the beginning of this video, I said that Julius, Julia uses the dreaded words cottage cheese in this recipe. <laughs> she only does so because when this cookbook was written, she's assuming that it wasn't as readily available to find something like ricotta at the store because this book was written for like American, American cooks. <laughs> and you know, maybe something like ricotta back in the 70s or 80s or 1975, it wouldn't have been as easy to find something like ricotta. So she's like, yeah, pick up some cottage cheese instead. Good substitute. Well. I don't need to do that because I have the ricotta here. And also thinking about cottage cheese on my lasagna kind of just makes me glug. Can I just have like a bowl, another bowl? Thank you. She says around half a cup to a cup worth of ricotta, cottage cheese. Uh, I'm gonna use a cup worth of it. So I'm adding an egg in with the ricotta. Why, you ask? But there's a reason behind it. I was reading a YouTube comment, not on my channel but on Julia Child's channel. Well, she's no longer alive, but she, she does have a YouTube channel and the lasagna episode is on that channel. And someone in the comments said, well, if you're gonna use ricotta, mix in an egg because then it's gonna be more structured and keep its shape when you bake it. Wow, okay, good tip. Okay, we gotta do one more thing. It's a white wine onion sauce. We need a whole bunch of it, four cups worth. It's the white sauce. Two saucepans, three cups of whole milk. You're gonna take your lactate today, right, Jamie? And then it says milk plus chicken stock. So I have a cup of chicken stock. <laughs> Mix it in with the milk, I don't know. Just heat that up. Reserved onions that I was saving from when I was making the tomato sauce. I have half of them from whatever that was along with six tablespoons of butter to a moderate heat. Blend the onions and the butter. Butter is bubbling. In goes eight tablespoons of flour, which is 60 grams. And is that spinach? Yeah, we don't want that. Cook that with the butter for two minutes. Turn off the heat 
and add two thirds of this hot milk mix. No more than that. You see correctly, I'm using a metal whisk. I know from experience that this thing can take it. Don't worry. Thank you though. Blend in a little more of the milk. I just need to keep around half a cup worth there. One third cup of dry white wine or vermouth. This is vermouth. I right, set that on a moderate high heat again. Very heavy on the wine flavor, so I think I'm gonna add a little more milk. Stirring vigorously, bring it up to a boil. Gotta just make sure it coats the back of a spoon, no problemo. Season, here goes the salt. You could use white pepper if you're smart. If you're not, use the black pepper. Turn off the heat. Exciting times ahead. We're now ready to assemble this lasagna. Lasagna. Just grease up the dish with a little olive oil. Line your first noodles on the base here. Just make sure that they fit accordingly. Yep. A few spoonfuls of the white wine sauce on top of the noodles. Julia says to be a little more conservative with the sauce on the bottom layers. And then while you work your way up, then you can start going a little heavy. <laughs> uh, spread on half the green vegetables. Honestly, I have a lot of this white sauce, so why don't you just add a little more? I'm gonna go against Julia here. Three tablespoons of the cheese. So here's some parm, gouda, there's some provolone. Half the diced meat. Spread it evenly. Half the mushrooms. I feel she's being a bit stingy on the white sauce. She says only a few spoonfuls, but I'm gonna go with a few more spoonfuls. All right, now we cover with more pasta. And whatever spinach I got left over. More combo cheese. Don't get cheap on us. Whatever meat you have left here. The remaining mushrooms. More spoonfuls of the bechamel. Cup of ricotta. She says to add that now. I figure that it probably could have gone on the bottom layer as well, but wh whatever. Another layer of pasta. And then with the overlapping stuff, you just kind of tuck it in. So one thing to keep in mind when you're watching me do this is that she doesn't mention the tomato sauce at all until the very end. And honestly, because there's just so many things to look at here, I forgot about the tomato sauce too. It's over here. But I did such a lovely job layering everything and she never mentioned the tomato sauce, so what's a man to do here? She says to only put it on the top. That's it. All right, so more white sauce. Now spooning the tomato sauce on very top. You spread it unevenly, leaving nothing exposed. I would like a nice golden brown on the very top. And if I sprinkle on the remaining cheese, that's gonna give me just that. Lastly, more Parmesan. That's why the hell not. Since you're making a little YouTube video here, a little cute little video, you wanna make sure that the baking dish looks half decent, you know, presentable for your viewers. 400 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm gonna bake this for around 30 minutes. And I'm gonna, it's gonna go into the upper third of the oven and I have a baking dish already in there because this thing's gonna get messy. I know it, you know it. After 30 minutes, this thing is looking sexy, but I'm gonna get the broiler on because I want the cheese on top to be browned. This thing is done. Order up. I do realize the challenges of trying to get the first slice of lasagna out of this thing. Things are gonna get a bit. Oh, shit. Okay, got it. It was very difficult to film that, by the way. It's very, it is a mess. I am a mess. Serve with a hearty red wine, such as a Beaujolais. Opa. Delicious, if you're gonna ask me. 
Love that. I actually, you know what? That was above par. It was fantastic. With the capital F. And I don't know if I would have enjoyed it as much if I was just using the leftovers that Julia was mentioning. Like if I just had leftover spinach in the fridge with leftover chicken, well, whatever was on my finger had some air time. Uh, if I just used, you know, stuff that was a couple days old, I don't know if it would have been as good as it was. <laughs> Same with the pasta. Like, you know, when you're making it from home, you know, you put in the, the work and it pays off in the end. Only complaint is that I wish that I added the tomato sauce on top of each layer. I felt like it was missing. It was just like only on the top. It was just not enough. Other than that, I loved it. So I'm a happy guy over here and I really don't know what kind of feedback I'm gonna get on this one. So, you know, you can call me an ignoramus if you would like, but Julia was called one too. So I'm in good company. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Orfra. Ha, ha, ha.